with our AccuWeather feature. On our Gang of Four today, we're talking about uh, the 9 11 uh, memorial and monument. Uh, Adam just emailed me. He said, uh, What about the Iwo Jima uh, memorial? You've all seen that before. That's the uh, depiction of the uh, Marines raising the flag mm -hmm. on Mount Suribachi. Let's talk about that for a minute. Okay, you have. Uh, a battle in which uh, the Japanese started out with 22,000 soldiers and had only 200 left alive at the end. On our side, casualty rate of something like 30 or 40 uh, percent. Um, that, I guess, is what I'm, I'm, I'm kind of thinking of. Um, I realized there was no single uh, moment uh, or image quite as, as clear as that one from 9-11, but that to me says um, defiance, it says there was purpose to this, this wasn't just a tragedy, people just didn't die uh, randomly. I guess that's sort of what I'm thinking of, and again, I'm no designer, but that's, that's, that's some of what I'd like to see depicted, and unless I'm missing something, that element is missing from, well, from again, I'll ground go back zero. To, I'll go back to the first responders. If you're going to do a, a, you know, and I'm not sure that there isn't a monument there to them, but I think those are the people that, that are very similar to the Marines you see at Iwo Jima. I mean, it, it's something to them because, again, they're the true heroes of this whole thing. When these buildings were falling down and being burned, they ran inside and were trying to save people, and, and some of them died a horrible death um, in the days after. They were trapped in the rubble. Uh, of those two buildings, so you know maybe maybe you're right. Maybe that's where you go, but I don't think that those folks get enough credit for the the heroism that they showed that day. You know, it's something we were discussing during the break here. What what would it be? What would that symbol be? Um, I'm I, I'm in approval of the current design and the construction. However, uh, if there's enough public outcry for it, I mean, I could imagine that sometime between now and the completion of this structure, there could be. Um, so uh, I feel as though it maybe something can have, something else can be done to help symbolize. Um, I'm do you all okay, think though. that the mayor will the mayor re? I think the mayor will have to revisit the clergy no clergy decision. I think in the next two weeks. Sure. I mean, yeah. Mario, from a from a j just from a public relations standpoint, mm -hmm. that's going to be an impossible position for Bloomberg to defend. Absolutely, uh, you know, and it's unfortunate because I think in the days after 9/11, uh, faith played such a huge, huge. role. In, yeah. in people's recovery from what happened and <coughs> to, to not acknowledge it during the ceremony and publicly saying religious leaders, relig people of religious faith will not be included as part of the, the programming uh, was I think a slap in the face to millions, tens of millions of Americans mm -hmm. regardless of race uh, and the wrong damn city too. I mean, there's over 21 major world religions in New York City. That's not counting. What a great opportunity to integrate Absolutely. religion and to, to really bring in all the faith. And you know what? I think uh, about that day back in 9-11 uh, when I was in college. And uh, I woke up, rubbed my eyes, could not believe what I was seeing, and immediately headed out to uh, our student, student area, cafeteria student area. And there was kids of all faith, whether it was Catholic, Christian. Uh, we had uh, Jewish people on campus that all gathered together to pray. It didn't matter. Isn't and, there something kind of inconsistent, too, about always saying uh, we're not at war with Islam, this was not, uh, this was not a, a Islamic, this is not in the, in the spirit of Islam, but then to turn around and say to the other faiths, just so no one gets offended, you can't be a part of this uh, commemoration of this dedication. I mean, which is it? You know, is, is yeah. religion the problem or, or is it not? Look, I think a number of people are in agreement that things are being handled inappropriately uh, as far as the ceremony and how they're going about doing this. Um, the building of the monument, uh, you know, that one is a, is a tough one, I think, you know, because you're trying to appease all these people. Do you do something defiant? Do you do something more solemn? But but you're right. As far as the inclusiveness, the, the ceremony, it's so politicized. It is so, it's almost so carefully managed that it, it doesn't, it doesn't really feel like it means anything, you know. I just—it feels very, I don't know, soft is the word, or just probably want to use another word that I can't say on air. All right, let's talk about something else. <laughs> I don't know if any of you have noticed, but Rick Perry's running for president. I really? No. I'll give you a moment. I could sworn I saw him <laughs> eating barbecue somewhere downstairs. You know that guy, the governor. Mm -hmm. The good hair governor. One of his. Uh, 
you know, one of his clearly one of his big brags is going to be uh, job creation. It, it and, is. And, and the statistic what is what that half of all the new jobs uh, in the country have been uh, created here in Texas. Are you, they're well, calling it the Texas miracle. Have you heard the about Texas that? miracle. <laughs> have you heard about that? <laughs> Boy, where have I heard that before? <laughs> so. Um, now people have started to say, well, whoa, 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 wait a minute, exactly what kinds of jobs uh, are these? And people have noted, for example, that there was an 18% increase in government jobs during that time, uh, about a 10% increase in private sector jobs. On the other hand, when you look at it per capita, uh, per capita, government workers have declined as a percentage of the new jobs in Texas. Um, so there is, in fact, uh, it, it is a private sector job creation phenomenon. It is not simply that uh, Obama sent a lot of jobs to Texas and that makes Perry look good. Um, how much of this can he take credit for, though? Didn't, didn't Rick Perry, in fact, inherit this economy or the conditions or the government uh, uh, posture such as it is toward job creation from George Bush? Yeah, but I mean, that's like saying, you know, when President Obama says everything that's gone wrong now is George Bush's fault. I mean, at, at some point in time, he is the leader of the state of Texas, and you've got to give him some credit for what is going on here. I think that How even, much credit do you give him, Joe? I think you give him quite a bit of credit. Well, should he be going around saying, should he be going around saying, I created these jobs? Can Absolutely. a politician say that? I think so. Well, I think. Him himself saying that, no, probably not. I create, I helped create. Perhaps. Perhaps some maybe of these jobs. you should take into uh, uh, contemplation all the the other legislators that helped him in this. I mean, Texas. I think one of the things that the rest of the nation is is again realizing is that it is a different structure. It is a different state. The way that we operate here, and uh, he does have to have these relationships with other legislators. And it is very much a team effort how things are sustained in this in this state. I I, I do not believe that it is accurate for any governor of Texas to take total credit for any major policy or gains in the state. Mario, the Express News put a chart out today that showed under Ann Richards there was 10.7 percent job growth. Under uh, George Bush there was 20 percent job growth. Under Rick Perry, 11 percent. So in a way, wouldn't you say more well, like he yeah. didn't screw it up? <laughs> yeah, I, I want to put this out there too. I'm going to listen to Rick Perry and what he has to say. I'm um, in that 52 percent that doesn't quite believe that Obama deserves to be reelected. Uh, so I am going to listen, but I will say uh, that his platform right now, he inherited. Uh, job growth in Texas has been steady for decades. Uh, strong energy sector, strong military sector, strong health care sector. These are areas that are basically recession proof. Uh, so he didn't really have to work too hard in those areas. No sales tax also helps companies do good business here. So Texas, just by and large, is a good place to, to develop jobs and to grow your business. Yeah. So Rick Perry, in my opinion, just didn't screw up what was going right but, already. But it, it, just give him credit for that. How many politicians have gone in and screwed up a good thing? Uh, there's been a lot that would do that. I think you've got to give him some credit for that. And I think Texas would be booming even more if there weren't the regulations well, that we have on the on the on drilling. I think the economy has been steady and it grows. Uh, the one area where I look at Perry with a with a discriminating eye is education. Uh, large cuts. Uh, Texas is way in the is way underperforming when it comes to graduating students. Uh, that's a big issue because I think the solution to problems is through education, and he didn't do a good job with that. But I got to listen to the man. Uh, Texas has been good for my business. It's been good for my family, and so he was the man in charge for the last eight years. Hey, well, I'm going to listen. Right now, he's talking about his you know Texas and its history, but I haven't seen him present how he would do this for the rest of the country. Nobody is. Everybody's getting giving very vague answers to very strong questions. You know, you ask, what do you want to do? I want to cut the federal deficit. How are you going to do it? Uh, get back to me in 2012. I mean, have you, I mean, Mitt Romney, he's... Even the guy who's supposed to be doing it now is going <laughs> to get back to us after he finishes golfing. All right, we're going to talk some more about this. Is Rick Perry uh, deserving of the credit? Uh, is it the real Texas miracle? Uh, is that wishful thinking? We'll talk about it with the gang, and you can hang with the gang at 599-5555 in the KTSA newsroom. Here's Karen. And, uh, the